How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone's having a good day. I saw this uh, post on Behance that was really cool by a designer named Ricardo Vicentelli called Seven Summits. And what he did is he had seven different mountains from seven different continents. And he had a gray kind of gradient map going. And then he had one square simplistically saying um, the name of the location and uh, the high and the name of the, the actual advertisement, Seven Summits. And I thought it was really cool, really popped out, just the one, one strong color against a dark background. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to recreate this. So let's head over to Photoshop. So first, I'm going to just go with an 1800 width by 1800 height, just because I want a square and I like to post things on Instagram. A resolution of 300 with the RGB color mode. Um, I'm just going to make this 8-bit. And then if you want to print this, go with CMYK. Other than that, you're ready to create. So now we have our background. First thing we're going to do is we're going to just uncheck our background. Just It's just a force of habit for me. Then we're going to go get our actual graphic, whatever we want as a background. This is one I just found on Pexels. I'll be linking it in the description. So you can download it. I'm just going to copy it for time's sake. And over to Photoshop and I'm just hit Control V to paste it. And what I'm going to do is go to view and I'm going to create some guidelines. And what this is just going to allow me, this is going to help organize myself when every anytime I'm designing, it's always just a good habit to have some guidelines. So horizontal. So you both, you're going to want to put both of them at 50%. Vertical and horizontal and it generates there you go. So next I'm just going to press control T to free transform this and I'm going to enlarge it. And I want the, the canyon to be in the middle. So I'm just going to align it with my guidelines. There you go. Perfect. So next, what I'm going to have to do is going to have to create that gradient map that creates those uh, dark colors. So normally, if you look at it first glance, you might think, oh, he just adds an adjustment layer and uh, it clicks black and white and then that's it. No, there's a little bit more to it. Um, black and white um, is a good idea if you want to just make a quick one. If you want to go a little bit further, we can start with our gradient map and then there we go. So it does the black and white effect. But is, if you notice, the actual post it has uh, dark gray colors instead. So once you have your gradient map on top, you can just click on the gradient here if your properties panel, once it opens up. And we're just going to use this one. So we're going to click on the bottom black. And for the dark gray color, we're going to be using 29, 29, 29. And then for the lighter gray, it's going to be C6. C6 and C6. There we go. So that's going to give us more of that, that gray color scheme. And then I still want more of that gray to pop up. So I'm going to click on this little diamond and I'm going to put the location to be at 75%. So more of that gray shows a little bit stronger. Um, this becomes personal preference on depending on what image. So usually I was testing this out and I use 75%, but I'm going to go with 65 because it's a little bit, um, too strong at 75%. And once I'm done, I'm just going to hit enter. Press OK. And there we go. So we have a gradient map. Next thing we need to do is create a new layer. And we're going to create that rectangle. So just open my click on my rectangle tool. And I'm just going to eyeball it and just make whatever size rectangle I want. I think that's good enough for me. And then I'm just press V for my move tool. And I'm just going to align it with my guidelines. Once they both turn purple, that means they're centered. There you go. Perfect. So there you go. Next, I'm going to double click on here. And once my layer style panels opens up, I'm going to go over to gradient overlay. So I get this. So I'll give you guys the properties for this. So whatever color you want. So let's just start from, uh, from scratch. So we're just going to black and white. Press OK. We're going to normal blend mode, opacity 100, scale 100, angle 90. We're going to open up our gradient. So my first color, this one is going to be the color you want to stand out. So it can be any color you want. So for the canyons, I'm thinking kind of like an orange one. I think that would be uh, pretty cool. A nice representation, like a reddish orange. Maybe a little bit more red. There you go. I'm starting to like how that looks. There you go. Perfect. So next on the white, you don't have to do anything to this one. All you have to do is actually click the one above it. And that's going to be the opacity. And we're going to set that to 3%. And the black might show up, but we're going to get rid of that in a second. Press OK. And then the last thing we're going to do, just open that up again. Click on your color again. 
and you're gonna wanna set this in the 35th percent location. So click 35% so that more of the orange is higher up. So it'll go a little bit higher than um, it being 50, 50. And then you just press okay. And then there you go, okay. Now what we need to do is get rid of that black. All we're gonna do is go to fill and set it at 0%. And that's gonna show that clear marking. So, and that's gonna do most of the job right there. Next, we are gonna go right click and we're gonna click on duplicate layer. And we're just gonna name this one shadow because this is what's gonna be our shadow. And I'm gonna right click again and I'm gonna clear the layer styles because we're not gonna need those anymore. So there you go. Next, I'm just gonna hit Control T on my keyboard. And on with your uh, arrow keys, you wanna just hit down and left. So down and left, uh, down and left, down and left. You wanna do this five times. An easier way to do it is just hold down Shift and when you click down and left, it'll move it by five pixels as opposed to one pixel every time. So just set this to wherever you want your shadow to be. I think there is good for me. So once that's there, I'm gonna actually move this below because obviously it's gonna be a shadow. And then I'm just going to go to filter, blur and Gaussian blur. And then I'm gonna click rasterize. Converting it to smart object will allow you to adjust how you want the blur to be if you wanna come back to this later. For me, since this is just a quick tutorial, we're just gonna click rasterize. And I'm just gonna adjust it to what I want it to be. So I want it to be not too, that's way too um, strong. I want it to be a little bit more softer. So let's do 50. Ooh, that's 59. Okay, I think that's good. Perfect. So now we have our shadow, but we don't want it showing in the background. So now we're going to have to create a layer mask. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select this layer right here. So once that's selected, you're going to hit Control or Command, depending if you're using a Mac, and click on the layer, and it's going to show marching in. So that's our selection already. Then we're going to go to our shadow layer right underneath, and we're going to click the layer mask button. And there you go. Um, so if this happens in your case, you need to invert it. So once you click properties panel, so let's say the properties panel is not popping up. So if it's gone for some reason, you can just double click on your shadow layer and it'll pop up. Or you could always go to just window and look for properties panel there. And then click on your shadow layer, make sure that the layer mask is selected and click invert. And there you go. And then for me, I'm going to actually lower the opacity to around 75% just so that it's not too strong. I'm gonna go with 80 actually, I think that's what I like. Yeah, perfect. So there you go. That is most of the effect right there. Lastly, all we're gonna have to do is just add text. So I'm gonna create a new layer above the rectangle. And the font I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using one called Bebas, Bebas New. And I'm just gonna write Canyon. And I'm gonna select all of this and just make sure it's white. And I'm gonna hit Control T so I can just move it around. And there you go. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. And there you go, Canyon. And then for that thinner font, I'm gonna be using Calibri. So I'm just gonna write Calibri up here. That should already be a font pre-installed. If not, um, you can just find it online easy. Oh, didn't mean to change that one. Forgot to create a new layer. There you go. Add my text. It's gonna be a bit of snooze. Now I'm gonna change it to Calibri. And then light. And I'm gonna make sure it's all caps. And then um, you can feel free to write anything here. Um, I would just put archaic because in my head that sounds cool. And then I'm gonna hit Control T. And all I'm going to do is shrink it down so that it lines up with the words of the canyon. So I want canyon to be the bigger word. I'm gonna hit enter. And then to kind of just preview it all, I'm gonna just clear the guides. And then I like to press F on my keyboard to kind of just show it how it looks by itself. There you go. And that's gonna be pretty much it. Um, what I really like about this, it's a really nice uh, way to show the bold colors and strongly present an image. You can use this for album covers or for poster designs. Um, 
pretty much anything um i would definitely love to see some of your guys's work if you want to uh post anything or share it with me just post it on um, instagram and then tag me on it uh, on wi-fi train and i would love to give some feedback or just check it out what you guys are doing or how creative you guys can get with it but other than that have a good rest of your guys's day